Hello, I am Phil, and today we're looking at the different slave trades that were occurring concurrently with the transatlantic slave trade. Now, oftentimes, what we hear is the transatlantic slave trade, and that's for a good reason, because this was a slave trade that took so many Africans out of the continent to destinations in the Americas and Europe. Uh, and so scholars and historians have really focused on this slave trade, but there were other slave trades that were happening concurrently with the transatlantic slave trade. It's important for us to have a context, and it's important for us to have an understanding of the totality of this slave trading business that took so many Africans out of the continent, that uh, uh, enslaved the continent, essentially, and uh, impoverized the continent and decimated the, the population of the continent. So let's take a, a closer look at these events, these horrific events that has been documented as the worst human tragedy ever, uh, ever recorded. So let's take a look at this now um, closely. So we begin with the uh, transatlantic slave trade. Now, as the name suggests, transatlantic, meaning it was taking Africans from the continent across the Atlantic Ocean, right? So the Atlantic Ocean versus Ocean, uh, Africans were taken to parts in in the, in the Americas and Europe, right? So the Africans were specifically taken from the West African coast and the West Central uh, African coast. So coming to the map here, we take a look uh, and see uh, that the West African coast uh, is here and uh, extending to the uh, West Central African coast as well uh, in what is today known as Gabon and the Cameroon, these countries in the West Central African uh, uh, location, and then, of course, extending westward to Nigeria uh, and to Ghana and to Ivory Coast, and then, of course, to uh, Guinea uh, and to uh, Senegal and countries in between. Uh, this, uh, enslaved Africans in this transatlantic slave trade were taken from those countries on the western coast because it was most convenient. They were coming mostly from Europe, right, European destinations, uh, European locations, excuse me, and coming down to the western coast. Why well, it was most convenient uh, geographically uh, for them to take enslaved Africans from those parts of the continent. And the destination then was North America and the Americas, and then, of course, Europe, right? So the transatlantic slave trade occurred over a 341-year period. Now, specifically from 1526 to 18. 67, and that's 341 years. Now, that's a long time. That's a long time to be, uh, you know, decimating the continent and taking people from one location to the other. That's a very long time, right? Spanning, you know, three centuries, uh, from the 16th century, uh, and let's put that here, 16th century to the 19th century. This was happening. So we just said, uh, 341 years, a long time. Now, during this time, 12.5 million Africans were taken from the continent. 12.5 million Africans were taken from the continent. Of this number, 10 million, 10.5 million uh, went to the Americas. So essentially, they were taken from the western coast of the continent to the Americas, right? So here, uh, primarily the United States, and to destinations in the Caribbean, and that's why today we have lots of black people in the Caribbean, their ancestors coming as a result of the transatlantic slave trade uh, to the Caribbean, to different islands in the Caribbean. And then, of course, extending southward to the South American continent, Brazil being the biggest of the uh, countries in this region, having a lot of black people that are today um, indigenous, I would say home, you know, called Brazil, their home, their native, you know, uh, native land, essentially. Right, because they know no other place, right? They were born there, they were raised there, and the and the ancestors coming, you know, uh, uh, as slaves to these parts, right? So it's very important for us to understand this. Now, to to have a scope of this of these numbers, uh, uh, let's take a look at this scenario. Now we have about seven countries today that have a population of 10 million. Among those countries is Sweden, uh, uh, Portugal. Uh, you have um, Greece. You have. Um, you know, the Czech Republic, these countries have a population of 10 million. Now, taking a country like Sweden, the entire population of Sweden, emptying that population over a 341 year period into a different, uh, you know, moving that population to a different location, that gives you a sense of the, of the scope of this tragedy of moving a mass movement of people from the continent of Africa 
two locations in uh, in the Americas, right? And of course, the two million, right? The two million uh, moving to parts in Europe, primarily in England, and of course, extending to countries like the Netherlands and, the, and, and Belgium uh, and, and other parts of Europe as well. So you can understand now the impact of the transatlantic slave trade, by far the most impactful, and that's why it has been the focus of scholars and historians and researchers trying to understand the, the massive nature of this slave, uh, slave trade that really impacted the continent in many ways, uh, decimated the population of the continent, took away, uh, took away manpower, and, uh, and they destroyed culture and traditions and, and, and put a reef amongst communities and so forth. But along the same lines, there were three other slave trades that were happening, and it's important for us to understand these events as well. One of the three is the uh, trans-Saharan slave trade. And this was happening south of the Sahara. And uh, if we come to the map here, we'll take a look here, south of the Sahara will be right here. And in countries today that are known uh, as Niger Republic, Mali, Chad, and Burkina Faso. Burkina Faso used to be known as Upper Volta. Right, so these countries were the countries where the uh, enslaved Africans were taken from uh, and in the south, uh, in the trans-Saharan slave, uh, slave trade, south of the Sahara. And they were not taken to destinations outside the continent. And this is very interesting because it, 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 it puts the slave trade in context that Africans were also trading Africans. And in this case, Arab Africans were trading black Africans, taken from these parts of the continent, Niger, Mali, Chad, Burkina Faso, uh, again, not to uh, destinations outside the continent, but to not African destinations. Right? So essentially, coming to the map here, so essentially they were taken from these countries we've identified uh, to destinations in North Africa, right? So to, to Morocco, for example, Algeria, Libya, uh, Tunisia, Egypt. And we have black folks in those parts of the world as well, the parts for the, of the continent as well. And then the other slave trade was the Red Sea slave trade. And uh, in this slave trade then, the enslaved Africans were taken inland of the Red Sea specifically Ethiopia, Sudan, Djibouti, uh, Djibouti, and Somalia, right? And we'll come to the map here. So the countries just along the coast of the Red, uh, Red Sea. And the Red Sea is right here. And the Red Sea divides Africa from Saudi Arabia and the rest of the, of the Middle East. And so the enslaved Africans were taken to the Middle East in the Red Sea slave trade. They were taken to the Middle East and in parts, in parts of Asia parts in Asia, right? So from the Middle East then, destinations in the Middle East and parts in Asia, to plantations in Asia. And that's why today we have blacks in the Middle East, we have blacks that are indigenous in the Middle East. Uh, their ancestors were taken there and they were born and raised there. Generations and generations of blacks living in the Middle East uh, and in parts of Asia as well, right? So the Red Sea slave trade took Africans from uh, countries close to the Red Sea that divides the country, that uh, you know, serves as a, uh, as a natural boundary between the continent and the Middle East and the rest of Asia. And then the Indian Ocean slave trade took Africans from East Africa, notably from Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, and countries in that region. And then it took uh, these enslaved Africans to the Middle East, uh, to India, uh, and to plantations scattered across the Indian Ocean, right? So here then is um, we have the countries in East Africa, and they were taken to the Middle East and to parts of, uh, to India, excuse me, and to plantations that were scattered across the Indian Ocean. Plantations scattered across the Indian Ocean. So this gives us a good sense of the scope of the slave trades that were happening uh, uh, in conjunction with the transatlantic slave trade that has been the most impactful of course. And to understand the enormity of the slave trade and its impact on the, on the African humanity. It's important for us to understand the scope of the slave, slave trades and in, in what is today known as the worst human tragedy of all times. So hopefully this gives us a good sense of how Africans were traded, uh, taken from their continent in their numbers to other parts of the world today. And this explains why we have a lot of black people around the world, especially in the Americas uh, and in Europe.
and especially looking at countries like like the United uh, United Kingdom, England, where we have we have a lot of black folks there. This really puts it in perspective.